Hello everyone, this is Administrator Nah, and I'm going to be showing RGE2 in this video. I've got a lot to go over, so I'm going to be pretty quick, but here are some timestamps of features that you should use for filmmaking, um, building, and PvP usage, etc. So, to load into your private server, you just want to click Custom Game down here and go to Current Map. Here you can choose what map you want to use. You can click sort here and even look for competitive maps to the PvP maps. And you also have a tab here for your maps. And you can see that I've got a few uh, here. I'll show you how to do that later. But for this video, I'm just going to be showing you on OW. So I'm just going to switch the uh, map to OW and then click launch. Once you've loaded into your private server, just deploy your player. Um, and you'll want to click P. It'll tell you to enable cheats. Once you have RGE on, you cannot turn it off in your session, which means anyone who joins your server during this time, their stats will not save, including your HQ stuff. Um, HQ passive stuff will still happen, so you'll still make resources, but you won't be able to manage your company in the server. Press yes, and then click P again, and you're in the new editor. Um, it's very similar to the old one. The biggest change is that the camera options are up here on the left uh, top. So we're just going to click for a studio camera. This is the most basic one. Click it, WASD, ENQ to move around. Uh, scroll in and out with scroll wheel. Uh, you can now create parts by clicking create part. Here it is. Click on it. You can use the tools up here or you can press 2, 3 and 4 on your uh, keyboard. And you can yeah just resize it. You can do whatever you want with it. And you can also rotate it. I know this isn't ideal. A lot of people prefer the sort of uh, gimbal looking, um, gyro looking thing, I should say. But this is a rotisserie style rotate. So it rotates around this point. So this is that, this is that, and this is that. Take some time getting used to, but um, this is what we have. You can also group uh, parts by creating two parts or three, like I just did. You can click and select now, and you can click up here to group them. And now you'll see in here, these act as a group, and they can be moved around and, yeah, do whatever you want with them. Uh, you can also change materials by using this materials tab over here. We have a ton. You can scroll through and see all of them. Uh, you can use all of them. You can also search. If you type in RVLX, you can see the default Roblox materials, uh, including some like Neon. Um, and if you type in BRM5, you can see just our custom ones as well. You can also hit, go to the color tab here and uh, change the color, which is pretty neat. You also have a properties window for this now, so you can manually change all of these, or if you want to copy a material, so this one's got tiles, copy that, you have to ungroup this, select this here, put this into the materials, enter, and now this is the same material as that part over there. If you still want to use props, you can head over to the asset browser down here, it's still the same thing, prefab, uh, and then props. And this is where we have tons of props, uh, lots of new stuff with Gen 4, obviously. Um, and you can still use R to rotate it, and hold control to place multiple or click once to get rid of it. Uh, you'll notice that when moving it, it's a bit like snappy and rotating snaps too. That's these snapping tools up here. So I can change these to zero. And now it will be super smooth and R will be super smooth as well. This is holding R by the way to get this to spin. Um, otherwise you can switch it back to whatever snap that you want. And these work with the move tools as well. So you'll notice here if I move this, it's snapping. And when I rotate it, it's also snapping. So yeah, that's very important. Now, if you want to use AI, um, unfortunately, the bots aren't great in custom areas at the moment. Um, I'd recommend only really using them in pre-existing locations. Uh, so over here is Kozlovka and go down to the asset browser. Um, RLF and you've got all the presets that we use in the game and uh, you can just you know, spawn these dudes in um, you can also spawn in PL5 bots 
which actually are friendly to the player and they will um yeah they will attempt to engage enemy air yeah they're not great but they work sort of um you can see that these uh, normal ai work well uh, but you can also so let's go RLF, let's spawn like a dude over here. You can also go up to AI here and you can do some stuff with their behavior. You can tell them to pathfind to locations by using walk weak or walk strong. Uh, walk weak, they will walk to a point, but if they engage, they will choose the engagement. Walk strong, they will just keep walking while shooting. So you can see here, um, it looks like he's walking the wrong way but he was just finding a path and you can see he's really slow and that's why we click up here to alert him and now he'll walk a bit faster narrowly avoiding that pole and yeah you can use this to sort of you know do whatever you want um but yeah that's that's ai for now we have more stuff we want to do uh, in the future but we just didn't have time to fully implement it now RGE for content creation is a bit nicer. Um, I actually just want to show off something up here. You've got the, this game mode tab up here. It has all of these settings that you can use. Uh, and one of them is you can set squad spawns very easily now. So I can set the green team spawn. Uh, I'm just going to put it around here. And then if I go to my player, I can set him to green and then click respawn. And you know, now I'm uh, now I'm right here. Um, and I've just done that because I want to spawn in this little place here to show you some tools with RGE. So if I go to game mode, I'm going to turn off time by clicking time disabled. And then I'm going to set it to about 6.5, which is about 6.30 in the morning. And then if I click to home and I click on a cinematic camera, I can then click the lock button and... Uh, Actually, I don't like that angle. I'm going to do a cinematic of this guy standing here. And I'm going to lock it onto his shoulder. So if I go back, can zoom in it, zoom it in a bit. And we can uh, also go over to color correction and depth of field. We can set uh, a focus distance. Let's turn up the far intensity. Let's get a bit more stuff in focus. Maybe just a tiny bit more. Actually, a tiny bit less. Focus distance about five. Let's turn the fire intensity a tiny bit down. And then you can click full screen up here to go full screen. And you can exit at any time by pressing L. You can also enter at any time by pressing L as well. And then you can see the camera is really fast. So we're going to go up here and turn this movement speed down to like 0, 0, 0, 001. L again. Okay, that's a bit too slow. Let's turn it to 0, 0, 001. L again. Yeah. And now we get this really cool sort of slow scrolling shot. You can also do this origin set. So I'm going to set origin here, press L, do the camera movement. And I'm like, oh, that's a bit too fast. Go back, press jump, put you back to origin. Now I can do it again while holding shift, which slows you down. Bit of a nicer shot. These post processing effects uh, actually stay around if you keep that camera locked in. So if I get out of RG, you can see that I actually still have that blur enabled. Um, and you can, you know, put F8.2 and you get these super sort of dreamy images. But if we go back to RGE, you can exit out of that cinematic camera back to a normal one and then back here and, you know, it is what it is. So if you want to save a map, I've got some buildings here that I want to save and I've got some parts here too that I'm just going to mess around with and um, get them ready to save as well. Wow, what a cool creation. You can actually just go up to file here and I'm going to save this and call it video test and press enter. And you can see down here that that's saved it. it gives you a little warning message and I'm going to explain that. Um, but first you can also press list and that will show you all your maps that you currently have. And if you want to load a map, you just click load and then you type in the, uh, the map that you want to load. So if I type in AA, it's a blank map. But if I go back and then type in video test, um, it brings back all the buildings that you had. Uh, you can also just press save, which is really handy. Uh, you don't have to type in the name once you've loaded in a map. 
But the really cool thing about this is you can actually go back to the main menu. And in the main menu, go to custom game, current map, sort your maps, and then we can see video test is now under here. We can click and set your private server to that map. What this means is every time you join your private server, it will automatically have RG enabled and it will have spawned in that map ready for you to use. This also means that if you're not online and you have another friend that uses your server, um, the map, the RGE map stays loaded in. So once I've loaded in, I don't know, it's spawned in again, but if I press P, you notice that I'm immediately in. And if I go to studio camera, what? Everything's still there. It's like it's saved and loaded. But what's even cooler is you can actually use this for PVP, which I'll show you now. So I'm gonna go custom game, current maps, and just set it to coast. And then once I've uh, loaded in, I'll cut back. So now I'm in coast, uh, I can press P, enable RGE like normal. And then I can just open up a studio camera and you can see it's nighttime currently. So I'm just gonna go game mode and set it to 12 midday. But you'll see a tab up here called PVP and you can change the round length here. I'm gonna set it to 12 seconds. You can change how many rounds there are in a match. You can also cancel the current round, cancel the current match. But the coolest stuff is you can move the objective to wherever you want. So I'm gonna move the objective up here. And I'm gonna also change the defending spawn. As you know, the defending spawn's usually here. I'm gonna move the defending spawn right here. And now if I start the match, see that I, uh, I spawn where I've set it and the objectives now in the new location. Uh, on top of this, you can obviously still use the building tools um, that we offer. So you can completely change a map, uh, cut off parts of it, do whatever you want. Um, but we also offer completely blank maps. So uh, you can just have a blank world create a map from scratch, place the uh, spawns, place the objectives, and then you can, um, so if I go up here, I can file, I'm gonna save it and call it coast. And uh, yeah, once it's saved, I can then go back to the main menu, set the map as my version of coast under your maps. And now when I load in, um, yeah, it'll have everything custom that I set. So, we really hope to see people using this to create their own PVP maps. And if you do make a good PVP map, join our Discord, um, go through the process to become our RG builder. And we will be taking some people's maps and putting them into the public pool so other people can uh, join them from their private servers and uh, see what you've made. Um, they won't be able to copy a map, it's all protected, but they'll be able to use it with RG with their friends and uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. This is all for RGE2. This video is very rushed, but it should give you the basics of everything you need to know.